Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. A telephone call took place today between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Prime Minister of the Republic of India Narendra Modi. During the call, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister expressed his best wishes to the government and citizens of India on the occasion of the nation's Republic Day. Prime Minister Modi conveyed his greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King in return. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of the historic ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of India and the importance of further strengthening relations to serve the common interests of both countries. For his part, uh, the Prime Minister Modi amended the, recommended the strength and uh, Bahraini-India relations and noted the Kingdom's commitment uh, to supporting the Indian national community in Bahrain. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 9 of the year 2022, appointing Abdullah Abdul Khaliq as Director of the Financial Resources at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. The Minister of Finance and National Economy shall delegate the appointed director to any of the government agencies. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, also issued Edict 10 of the year 2022, appointing Maryam Jum'a Al Fleti as Director of the Housing Services. Directorate at the Ministry of Housing. His Royal Highness also issued Act 11 of the year 2022, appointing Khalil Ibrahim Al Ba'an as Director of the Land Survey Directorate at the Survey and Land Registration Bureau. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 12 of the year 2022, appointing directors at the Real Estate Regulatory Authority. Under the Edict, Hamad Mohammed Hazim was appointed as Director of Information and Real Estate Development Directorate, with Dan Ahmed Al Bin Ali as Director of the the Human and Financial Resources Directorate and Mahnaz Ghloum Abu Qasim as Director of Real Estate Operations Directorate. The Council of Representatives held its weekly session presided over by its speaker, Fozi Zainal. The meeting discussed and approved the reports of the Services Committee regarding a draft law on private educational and training institutions and a draft law on issuance against unemployment. The meeting also discussed and approved the report of the Public Facilities and Environment Committee on a proposal amending some provisions of a decree law on electricity and water. Count Council of Representatives Speaker Fozi uh, Bint Abdullah Zaina stressed that the programs, plans and strategies adopted by the Supreme Council for Women, the STW, headed by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika Bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa to empower Bahraini women, protect their dignity and enhance their standing in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. Marking Arab Woman Day annually observed on February 1st, Zaina lauded the great support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She also affirmed that the royal support of Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King contributed in setting the Bahraini woman an example of Arab woman progress, recalling the aspired Arab goals that are based on enhancing women rights. Bahrain celebrates the Arab Women's Day amid national pride in the achievements that have enhanced the kingdom's respect of women's rights and boosted their active role in the progress and prosperity of the nation under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Bahraini women, thanks to the unlimited support of His Majesty the King, the government policies and the initiatives of the Supreme Council for Women, headed by Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King, Prince Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa have been able to confirm their status as dependable partners in the nation building process and sustainable development. Bahrain, under the follow up of the Supreme Council for Women and in partnership with the executive legislation and judicial authorities, has approved more than 150 royal orders, laws, legislative amendments, ministerial decisions, and circulars during the last two decades. Bahraini women have actively participated in enriching democratic life since their participation in preparing and approving the National Action Charter and exercising their political rights as voters and candidates in the parliamentary and municipal elections since 2002. The contribution of Bahraini women in the labor market increased to 43% of the total national workforce and 47% of business owners thanks to the support and encouragement of the Supreme Council for Women and its distinguished initiatives such as the launch of the Bahraini Women's Capacity Development Center, Riyadat.
The percentage of women in the government sector has risen to 55%, in the executive jobs to 46%, and in specialized jobs to 62%. Women were also at the front lines of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, with a representation of 75% of the members confronting the pandemic. The Supreme Judicial Council held a press conference headed by the Supreme Judicial Council Deputy Chairman and Cassation Court President Chancellor Abdullah bin Hassan al Buainin, where he reviewed the achievements of the Judicial Authority in 2021. He announced a decrease in the annual backlog of cases by 16.5%, noting that the average age of the ongoing lawsuit has become less than five months in a single judicial instance. al Buainin said that the speed of resolving cases has made progress on the level of general performance of the courts, adding that 90% of the cases were resolved in less than six months. He said that the statistical indicators of the execution courts indicated that more than 93% of the judicial decisions were taken within five working days and 82% of the judicial decisions were taken within one day. For his part, the head of Judicial Inspection Directorate, Judge Chancellor Abdurrahman Al-Mala, explained uh, that uh, the judicial inspection continued in coordination and cooperation with judicial supervision to follow follow up on the complaints submitted and the preparations of technical reports. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, marking the 21st anniversary of the National Action Charter and 54th anniversary of the establishment of Bahrain Defense Force. During its regular meeting today, headed by the, the Sheikh Hamad Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid al-Khalifa, the SCIA noted that the anniversary of the National Action Charter is a precious one that constituted an important turning point in the modern history of Bahrain in which it reflected the wise vision of His Majesty the King along all the combined efforts that adopted a comprehensive development march under His Majesty's leadership. Meanwhile, the SCIA pointed out the great role of the Bahrain Defense Force that work along the other security and military sectors to preserve and protect national gains and achievements. Then the Council lauded the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in revising and updating the measures regarding prayers in mosques and places of worship. The Council asserted that these royal directives reflect Bahrain's keen interest and care under the leadership of His Majesty the King to places of worship and their importance in the hearts and souls of all. The Council also praised the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to expand the enforcement of the Alternative Sanctions and Measures Law and implementing the Open Prisons Program reflects the Kingdom's pioneering approach and its quality, le quali quality leap in the human rights field. Finally, the Council condemned the heinous terrorist attack on the Houthi terrorist militias that targeted the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and uh, the United Arab Emirates. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid al-Zayani, presented the Prince Salman bin Hamad Medal for Medical Merit to the Ministry's employees in implementation of the Royal Order and the Directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Minister congratulated the recipients on obtaining the medal and hailed their dedicated efforts, wishing them every success to continue serving the nation. Addressing the ceremony, the Minister said that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, greatly appreciate the efforts and sincere dedication of all those who work on the front lines in the nation's ongoing fight against the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. He hailed the dedicated national efforts exerted by the health professionals, the Bahrain Defense Force, the Ministry of Interior and all other supporting authorities to combat COVID-19 pandemic. The employees expressed their pride at receiving the Prince Salman bin Hamad Medal for Medical Merit, adding that the honor would motivate them to further serve the nation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa directed to continue the expansion applying alternative sentencing which correlates with the initiation of implementing open prisons program. To talk more about that, we are joined on the phone by the head of Alternative Sanctions Division, Captain Jasim Jabal al -Dusiri. Hello, Captain al -Dusiri. The directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister will lead to increasing the beneficiaries to more than 3,700. To what extent would this further reinforce this national project. Uh, the vision of His Majesty the King Hamad Naysa al-Khalifa 
that the Dutchman has made the Kingdom of Bahrain a pioneer model in the field of human rights to be followed by all countries worldwide. Just as the directives of uh, His Royal Highness Prince Salman Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, and Prime Minister Gardasan to expand the implementation of alternative sanctions codes. Uh, the start of the implementation of open prison program during the coming month reflects His Highness' interest in uh, and consulting the concept of human rights and his kings of to develop the legislative, sentence, the legislative system that is in line with modern, modern penal systems. And these directives are uh, support for us to develop work and continuity, as the directives have already been made to expand the alternative sanctions code and uh, resulted in the amendment of Article 13 which gave the Ministry of Interior authority to request the execution judge to replace the original penalty with an unfair sanction without the half term condition and even before the execution of the original penalty. But through the royal directives, the number of beneficiaries has increased as the number of beneficiaries since the start of the actual application of the law up to date has reached uh, 3,826, which is uh, considered an excellent number during an implementation period. Uh, directives, the directives of His Highness, the Crown Prince, and the Prime Minister support and the motivation for us uh, to do more, which will contribute uh, to the success of the program in a positive way that exceeds expectations. That's actually my follow-up question. Captain, the Ministry of Interior succeeded in making this project a reality for the human rights system in Bahrain, and open prisons is a shining example. What social aspects does such a step carry? Uh, there is no doubt that uh, the Ministry of Interior and uh, the leadership, His Excellency General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, God bless him, has proven its ability to work professionally, which led to the correct application of the law. From the first moment, we have seen the positive impact, whether on the beneficiary himself or on his family and his society as well. The law created a kind of uh, distinguished balance between the requirements of justice on the one hand and the fearful of the requirement of, uh, for the rehabilitation and reform of the beneficiary by integrate, integrating, him himself, uh, integrating him into the society, on the other hand. Moreover, this legislation development witnessed by the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, strength its uh, international position in the field of human rights. So this, this positive reaction acts as an Initiative, uh, initiative to move uh, from uh, on the approach and for further uh, development in order to ensure the achievement of the desired goal and provide the level of the of level of benefit uh, to the largest possible extent, which uh, undoubtedly everyone will witness positive results in the coming period by applying the open prison program that the ministry is working to establish the infrastructure in order to be implemented during the coming month, in order to parallel the alternative sanctions code and implementation of the directives uh, issued by His uh, Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister Kat Lassam. Yes, thank you very much. And that was the head of Alternative Sanctions Division, Captain Jasim Jabal Dusri. Thank you for joining us. Bahrain's outstanding vaccination record, efforts and planning have been praised by the Gulf Health Council. The council highlighted the Bahraini efforts in vaccination and stressed the kingdom got rid of endemic measles and rubella in 2019 and how the rate of routine vaccination for children and other components of society reached 97 percent. The council added that Bahrain has been free of malaria since 1981, according to the World Health Organization, and noted that the kingdom is participating in the development of the 2021-2025 Regional Action Plan to Combat Malaria. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,223,859 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,193,959 had taken the second, and 939,199 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 44,170 with 4,251 recoveries, 5,808 registered new cases and one death. There are 126 active cases receiving treatment and 14 patients in critical condition. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. And to talk more about the importance of adhering to the precautionary measles measures during the yellow level, we are joined on the phone by consultant family physician and chief of health programs at the Health Promotion Directorate in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Fatma Habel. Hello, Dr. Fatma. Can you tell us more about uh, the continuation of the yellow level till February 14th and your advice in this regard? Uh, good, good evening to everybody. Uh, the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus announced recently the continuation of the uh, yellow, uh, yellow level until the 14th of uh, 2022 as a precautionary measure to combat um, the COVID pandemic and the increasing uh, cases. Um, this is an important and valuable measure, uh, honestly, to reinforce strict compliance to all precautionary measures announced previously and to maintain the health and safety of uh, all citizens and residents uh, in our beloved kingdom. The yellow level res uh, restricts um, entrance to certain places uh, where only vaccinated individuals, uh, recovered individuals, or children below 12 years old accompanied by a vaccinated or a recovered uh, adult can enter, such as shopping malls, um, indoor areas, indoor um, areas in the restaurants, indoor events, uh, indoor gyms, sport halls, swimming pools, even uh, entrance to spas or barber shops, cinemas, and so on. Um, Meanwhile, um, the essential sectors are uh, still open for all people regardless of their uh, vaccination status. Um, also, the governmental sect sectors um, um, operate with a, almost 30% of their employees uh, working from home in order to reduce um, contact between uh, individuals. Um, of course, people can uh, review the latest guidelines and instructions which are uh, announced by the National Medical Task Force uh, through uh, all uh, Ministry of Health um, channels, um, uh, through the Instagram, through Twitter, the website, and even through the um, website, which is www.healthrs.gov.ph, which has everything uh, regarding the um, uh, corona pandemic. Of course, I would like to emphasize on the importance of wearing face masks all the time, uh, practicing social distancing all the time, and maintaining full vaccination status and frequent hand washing. Yes. And at the end, I want to um, uh, just remind the people, remind the audience, uh, for any uh, person who has any kind of symptoms, even if they were very mild symptoms, they need to get to get tested as soon as possible, either by doing a rapid test at home or by contacting Triple uh, Four uh, for assistance. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for that feedback. That was consultant, family physician, and chief of health programs at the Health Promotion Directorate in the Ministry of Health, Doctor Fatma Habel. Thank you for joining us.